All right, guys, in this video, I want to talk a little bit about functions that you have to be a little more careful with. Uh, this particular limit that we're looking at here, we'd like to be able to put 6 in place of the x and see if we get a value that's non-indeterminate. And if you put 6 in place of the x, and I'm sure you can do it in your head, you square the 6, you get 36. 36 minus 36 is 0. Square root of 0 still zero. That's actually not the answer to this particular limit. We haven't looked at anything quite like this yet. If you think about this particular function, not any old number can go in place of x. Uh, you're going to run into some imaginary results, non-real numbers, if you let the values you put in place of x grow above 6. If we wanted to talk about the domain of this, the values of x that can be placed into the function, the smallest value of x that we can place into this is actually negative 6. The largest value of x that we can place into this is positive 6. Now we can plug in negative 6 and we can plug in positive 6. So I'm using brackets to kind of indicate that those two values are included. Notice that the biggest value that we can put into this function is 6. We can't put anything bigger than 6. So when we're asked to evaluate the limit as x approaches 6, we still need to think about one-sided limits. We can't approach 6 from the bigger side. If you look at the graph of this function, it's actually the top half of a circle centered at the origin. Now my graph doesn't look like a circle because I graphed it on the, the standard viewing window on the TI-83, but this is a, a circle centered at the origin with a radius of 6. So the farthest we go out here on the x-axis is 6, and the farthest we come back here on the x-axis is 6. We don't have any way to approach, approach 6 from the bigger side on this graph. Even if you look at the table of values, you will see that on the smaller side of 6, you do have function values in the table. So you have these 5.997, 5.998, 5.999. You do have small function values, but function values nonetheless, nonetheless there. And then at 6, you have a value of 0. On the other side of 6, error, error, error. That's where we start running into our imaginary results. So with these square root graphs, with these graphs that have restricted domains, you're going to, be, you're going to have to be a little bit careful with just plugging the value x is approaching into the function and get, trying to get away with it. Uh, the limit that we were asked to find up above, we can go ahead and, and write out as two one-sided limits here. The limit as we approach 6 from the smaller side, we definitely can put a number slightly smaller than 6 here. I'm just going to kind of indicate that with the same symbol that we have down in the limit. If you take a number slightly smaller than 6 and square it, you get a result that's slightly smaller than 36, just beneath 36. If you do 36 minus that number that's very close to 36, you'll get 0, but a number that's slightly bigger than 0, and the square root of 0 is 0. So this one-sided limit from the smaller side definitely is 0, but on the bigger side, if you put a number slightly bigger than 36 in place of the x and try to get away with that, as long as you're careful, you should run in, you should realize that you're going to run into some trouble slightly bigger than, th than 6, you square it, you end up with a number slightly larger than 36, 36 minus a number slightly larger than 36, kicks you out on the negative side of 0, so I'm just going to indicate what, that with a 0 and a little minus there. How do you do the square root of a negative? Well, it's a non-real result, so I'm just going to write non-real here. There's no spot for this in the coordinate plane. This second limit, this limit from the bigger side, is actually one that we can say does not exist. Because we can't approach this value, 6, from both sides on this particular function, what we're going to have to conclude with is that these are non-equal, the two one-sided limits, and then since they're non-equal, since one of them doesn't exist in fact, by default, the overall limit is going to not exist.